Everybody knows the worst part about working with 3D printed props is the sanding. Everybody wants a nice smooth part and a nice smooth finish, but it takes time to get there. Well, in today's video, I wanna show you guys how to go from a raw 3D print fresh off the printer to something that's nearly perfectly smooth without any sanding and is ready for paint. Let's get started. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank, and today we are talking about how to smooth your 3D prints without any sanding, quotation marks. As you guys know, on this channel, I've been using a lot of PLA, and I just like my PLA. Everything behind me is some type of PLA, PLA Plus Plus or PLA Pro, and I've started recently dabbling into PETGs. It's a little bit stronger, allegedly easier to sand, still need to test that. But today, we're gonna be talking about specifically ABS and ASA because they have a very special property to them. They are reactive to acetone. Now, before we get into anything involving how to vapor smooth these, how to make them look nice and shiny, there is some health and safety warnings we need to talk about. And for that, we're gonna switch to Danny. So using ABS and ASA brings a ton of different advantages as well as some cons over standard filaments such as PLA and PETG. There's a reason that most cheap printers for the last five plus years have pretty much exclusively advertised being able to print PLA and PETG. One, they're easier to print, but two, they're also a lot safer to print. Something we wanna make very clear getting into this video is that there are a number of safety concerns when working with ABS and ASA, not just from the acetone side and using chemicals to smooth parts, but also from the printing standpoint. ABS and ASA both release VOCs, which are toxic chemicals into the air as you print them. It's the same reason why you don't wanna be smelling burning plastic, and usually it smells pretty bad. For that reason, we wanna make it very clear if you're going to be following any of the instructions in this video to be chemically smoothing or just printing ABS or ASA, please make sure that you have the proper PPE for all of that. If you're printing ABS, don't do it in your bedroom. It is very toxic to be printing next to you where you're sleeping constantly. You need good airflow, proper filtration, either in your printers or in your workspace, and anything that you're doing when it comes to melting any of these plastics, you need to have a respirator on. Now, while we are covering a variety of the dangers of working with these filaments, please make sure you do your own research. These are not PLAs, these are not PETGs. There is a ton of stuff that you wanna learn about these before you just start sending full suits in this. Okay, so with the health and safety stuff out of the way, why ABS and ASA and why now? So pretty much everyone knows PLA for 3D printing now, but back when I got started, which was like late 2016, PLA was still pretty new-ish to 3D printing. While it was kind of regarded as the easy material to print in, it kind of just sucked at that point. Uh, the standard printing temp was like 190 degrees as opposed to the like 220 now. And it just, it had a lot of flaws. So most printers that were being sold, I guess I'd say like semi-professionally, uh, yeah. were being sold to print ABS. It was the more common and well-used plastic in the industry at the time. However, printers that were enclosed and could print them at quality were astronomically expensive. Meanwhile, as 2017 hit and a lot of the Chinese market started expanding for 3D printers, we saw budget options popping up that could pretty much exclusively print PLA and PETG. So when I got started, it was basically exclusively ABS. Meanwhile, by the time Frank joined, things were changing. So when I started in about 2019, PLA was fire and forget. It was the easiest material to print with. That's why a majority of my stuff is PLA and I still do like using it. I've refined sanding and post-processing it pretty easily. Nowadays, the machines that we get just out of box on the shelf, the budget printers can handle a variety of materials right out of box because of the work, because of everything that everybody had gone through prior to dialing and print profiles, advancing the technology. And now you can get printers out of box for three, four, five hundred dollars that can do these higher end materials like ASA and ABSs without warping, without the issues, without the trial and error. And you can just throw this stuff out of the printer and it prints. Okay, so now that all the health and safety and warnings are out of the way in the explanation, now it's time to actually show you how to do vapor smoothing on ABS and ASA prints mm -hmm. and go from this to this. Let's get started. Okay, so this is all you need to get started. We are out in my garage, and typically when we are doing this, we're gonna open the garage door, make sure you have good airflow, we're not in like a bedroom somewhere, and also make sure you guys have the proper PPE. You're gonna want a budget for about 50 bucks to get the setup that we have. You can go bigger. If you do decide to do larger pieces, you can get a larger bin. Obviously the cost will go up, but it's the exact same concept as what we are gonna show you right now. In front of us right now is pretty much everything that you actually need to put together a acetone smoothing setup. Right now, we don't actually have the respirator with us, uh, but we do have some N95 masks. Highly recommend if you guys are doing this anywhere other than either outside or in a garage with the garage door open, you need a actual respirator, not just a mask, especially not just like a dust cloth or anything. You need actual proper PPE. With that said, some other PPE we have are obviously some gloves 
and all of that is specifically because we're going to be working with acetone. The stuff can be pretty toxic. You don't want to get it in your eyes, on your skin, anything else. Make sure that you guys have stuff to be able to wash any of it off if you do get it on you. With that though, pretty much all you need is a plastic tub. We have a small metal grate in the actual tub so that way our plastic part sits on that as opposed to in the bottom of the tub in case any acetone drips off of the paper towels down into the bottom and paper towels. The point of these is you're gonna be saturating these fully with your acetone, lining the entire side of the container, put some on the bottom in case any saturated cloths do drip a little bit and set your timer. Now, one final note about the actual plastic bins. And this is probably the single most important thing you need to double check past the PPE that you were using on this. Acetone melts plastic. That's the whole point of why we're using it. Make sure that the bins you're using are polypropylene. They do not react to acetone and pretty much any other plastic bin that you get will literally melt trying to do this. So be sure that you're getting the right plastic bin for these experiments. Okay, so to get started, place some paper towel in the bottom of the bin, and then you're gonna place the metal grate over top of it. You are not trying to sit the part in the acetone, you are trying to soak it in the acetone vapors. Danny is folding up the paper towel, this way he can just pour a couple dabs into the corners of it, and it'll soak through the paper towel, and then you can unfold it and hang it inside of the chamber. You can see the clear discoloration between the soaked part of the paper towel and the non-soaked part, and he is using the natural creases of the paper towel to overhang. This is before of the inside of the mask, then just lay it inside. and set a timer for about half an hour. And here are the final results from the vapor smoothing. We're gonna be covering all of these pieces, showing them up close and the differences in them, why we got different results and what we would do differently. So right here is what we started with. This is just a raw print off of a new monitor printer. Take note, we are using Bamboo slash Orca Studio print profiles. So we're getting pretty good results on things like the Bamboo X1Cs and H2Ds. Your results are going to vary. This is probably gonna be the biggest variance in quality depending on the machine you are using. And this right here is after one round of vapor smoothing. This is ABS, and as you can see, it came out a lot shinier. There is no pre or post sanding done on this at all. But if you look close enough, you can still see the ripples of the layer lines. And this was on a very high quality print, so this is still going to need some work, but just the difference in this is amazing. So this is a Mark 42 gauntlet, which is a super detailed print and probably one of the best examples of something you wouldn't want to be sanding by hand. Now, this was one of the first pieces that we acetone smoothed while doing the tests for this video, and it didn't quite cook just long enough. You can see it definitely has the gloss finish. However, when compared to one that we did cook all of the way, you can see this one's even shinier especially down in all of the little detail areas. So when it comes to the process, as we mentioned earlier in the video, especially when it comes to more detailed pieces like this, there will be some trial and error. Something that is very nice about this though, is if a part does not cook long enough and you need it to go back in, you simply need to wait for it to fully cure and you can put it back into the acetone vapor bath. Now, another method you can add to this entire process is sanding. There's still gonna be cleanup that needs to be done. This is a good example of sanding a part before you vapor smooth it. The bottom section here it was completely left untouched. This was a raw print and you can see with the light over there, you can see the ripples. Now it feels smooth, but you can still feel those bumps. However, up top here, you can see that the, the picture is almost perfectly clear and crisp. Yes, you can still see some lines and transitions, but that's more of the color changes in the print itself and the layer lines. This is perfectly smooth now. This was done with a a uh, rough pass of 220 grit sandpaper, and then a pass of wet sanding, 600, 1000, 1500. Now, I probably wouldn't have needed to vapor smooth this because I could have just sanded this entire part. So you have to weigh the pros and cons of that, but the results speak for themselves in looking at how unbelievably smooth this is, whether you're going to sand it before you smooth it or after. I could still wet sand this side that has already been vapor smoothed and get these results, but you're definitely going to want to experiment back and forth to just play with the different finishes. And this is more or less ready for paint where this side I might want to sand one more time. Compared to something like this that was sanded after it was vapor smooth. This is a metallic ABS. And while this side does look pretty good, again, you can see those ripples and layer lines that are just artifacts from the printer itself. Printers still aren't 100% perfect and these were done on higher end machines. This side, however, had a full pass of sanding and wet sanding. It took away all that sheen and shine, but it is still ready to be painted, and this was done after the process. So it definitely got me closer to being able to smooth it. I would have done a vapor pass 
and then sanded it. And as you can see, this is still incredibly smooth. It just doesn't have that nice glossy finish. Another advantage of the pre and post sanding is dependent on the type of finish you want. If I'm going to paint this, I vapor smooth it, sand it, and I lose this sheen. However, if this is the final result I want, I want a gloss black, a gloss red, a gloss blue, you pre-sand it, vapor smooth it, and then it brings that gloss shine back. This way, if this is the end part and this gets scratched, I'm not scratching paint. I'm not scratching anything. I can get that gloss finish and this is my end result. So it's gonna be a lot more durable. Little imperfections and scratches you'll get from wearing cosplay or costumes aren't gonna show up as much because you're not digging through paint and primer, revealing the initial color. This is the full final color. At the end of the day, this is just a new tool in your toolbox. It's not going to make everything 100% perfectly paint ready with no imperfections, but you're just gonna to need to experiment with the back and forths of when you wanna sand versus when you can get away with just vapor smoothing it. So to show all the different options when it comes to finishing using acetone vapor smoothing, we have this face plate. Now, each section of this face plate had some different version of finishing work. This top corner here had no sanding at all, just acetone vapor smoothing, which as you can see, it was a fairly rough print. And while it did help smooth it out, it definitely did not save the finish, especially with a metallic paint like this. Meanwhile, this corner had a single pass of 220 sanding, significantly better than the no sanding, but still looks a little rough. In this corner, we have just a pass of post sanding. So this was acetone vapor smoothed and then hit with a, a single pass of 220 and a single pass of wet sanding. Finally, we have all of it. This had a pass of pre-sanding, acetone vapor smooth, and then post sanding. You can see when looking at all of them simultaneously that clearly going through all of the same processes while adding vapor smoothing gives you the best result overall. It is really important to emphasize that if you're doing a metallic finish on parts, you still probably are going to need to sand these things. Acetone vapor smoothing smooths out parts, but it will not save a bad finish on a print. To further emphasize this, we have our two painted doom masks. For this doom mask, since we went with a much brighter finish, you're able to see a little more of the striations in the remaining layer lines. They're not that prominent, but they are still present. And that is very easily picked up because of the fact that this is a much shinier finish. It's very metallic, it's very reflective, so the light will bounce off of all of those small ripples a lot more significantly. Meanwhile, if you're doing something that has a much more matte finish, such as this more hammered iron look, you can get away with a lot more sins on your print. This Doom Mask had no sanding on it whatsoever, and we were only able to get away with that because of the fact that we have a much more textured and matte finished paint. So guys, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video of a couple key things to note. We cannot emphasize the safety in this enough. This is toxic chemicals. Acetone is very bad for you. It is very flammable. Printing with ABS and ASAs, please do your research. Don't just brush it away. Oh my God, I've been printing with this in my room for, don't do that. Please be safe. Now, obviously a lot of these were some smaller parts, masks, gauntlets, stuff like that. If you guys want to see some more impressive builds that utilize acetone vapor smoothing, please check out our friends KA Cosplay Tech, who did an amazing acetone vapor smoothed Iron Man suit. There's basically no paint on that thing. And our friend Nick from Plentiful Props 3D, who just finished an incredible Tron Ares build, once again using just wet sanding and acetone vapor smoothing to get his final finish. Both of those builds are incredibly impressive, and we wouldn't have been able to put this video together without their help. So be sure to give them some love. As much as it pains me, I'll be the first to admit to Danny that this process is awesome. And because of the advancements in technology and being able to use ABS and ASA, um, stay tuned on the channel. I am going to be reprinting my Prime 51 Iron Man suit in all ASA and ABS. <sighs> It'll be worth it. What I'm saying is subscribe. And if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video, leave them down below. There are going to be questions about this. If you guys have any tips or tricks that maybe we didn't even mention or just you've been experimenting with, I would love to read those comments. And for the Prime suit and all the other things, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And uh, if you want me to bully Danny more, leave comments because it's fun. I don't have to stand as Prince anymore. Yeah, you do. It was Danny's birthday yesterday. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching <laughs> and you have a good day.